Good morning, friends. How's it going? How is everybody today? Well, I tell you what, in the middle of the United States, it is cold. I mean like minus one cold and snowing. We're supposed to get five to nine, don't really know. Um, went out to my hardwood supplier this morning. I got there right at opening time and they were getting ready to pack it in. They said I was the only customer this morning, so that's kind of where we're at. Little past of snow or, you know, cleared spots going down the road and stuff. So we're back at the shop. The shop's close to my house, so if it gets bad, I'm, I'm out of here too. But I'm just working on some handles, and I just wanted to, uh, axe handles that is. Um, I wanted to go over these. I've, I've mentioned these, uh, what a interesting, shall we say, scenario, these Pulaski handles are. If you don't know what a Pulaski is, here is a Pulaski head. It's a, it's not a mattock. It's a mattock or whatever you want to call it, a matlock. Um, this is a Pulaski. This is uh, three and a third pounds. It has a, an ax uh, head on one side and then a grubbing and on the other, this gets sharpened, um, and I think, I don't know, Jay, I'm sorry, I forgot which edge gets ground, I think it's the bottom side, and it gets ground at 45 degrees, if not the bottom, it's the top, but I think it's the bottom. Just thought I'd pop in, um, check out Jay Daniels' channel. I believe his video, I'm sure he'll pop in and uh, weigh in on the Pulaski thing. He's far more knowledgeable about Pulaski's than I am. Uh, but he has a video, Stand Up and Grub, I believe. And I believe he also has, I don't know if it's in the same video or not, but he actually go, runs through sharpening a Pulaski. Definitely worth a gander. All right, back to the show. Uh, and these are used, uh, the fire jumpers um, in the wildfires and whatnot, when they're doing a fire, a fire line or a skirmish line, whatever you want to cut, they're digging a trench basically. And they're, uh, these are what they strap on their back. Um, Jay's a, a member of the fire department where he lives um, in his area up by his ranch. Um, he's a supervisor, I don't know, you'll have to ask him, but they have a fire department there and he's very well uh, versed and very knowledgeable in the use of a Pulaski, how to properly use it, um, how a bunch of guys when they go into a fire, uh, how they spread out and dig a, a trench um, to hopefully get the fire to not jump the trench. Um, just kind of fell in love with them. Um, it's an axe. I gotta have one. <laughs> I gotta have one. Uh, typically, though, they go on uh, a 40 inch handle, which, you know, I mean, what the heck? This is a 40 inch handle. What Jay tells me is that you should be able to do that. And, you know, I mean, you're doing this. So that makes a lot of sense, unless you're a midget. A 36, it, you know, you're just closer and you're bent over more. So I would think that the, a 40, it, it makes a lot of sense. My problem, I have uh, an order for one and my problem is getting these darn things to stay straight. Uh, the first one, uh, this one actually twisted. I don't know if you can see the twist in it, but if you sight down this and compare the horizontal plane to the butt of the handle to this, you'll see it's twisted. They're not parallel. So obviously I can't send that out. 
Um, you made another one? And in both, instead of being twisted, it was a, a rocking chair. So what I've come up with before I start shaping these is I'm running them through the jointer. Uh, this one worked out good. And then I put them on a flat surface to check them. Uh, I kind of decided on these that I didn't like the grow rings on this. You can see how far apart they are versus something of thus leanness. Uh, this is the one that's going to go out. Yet I rubbed this out last week and it was flat and now it's got about it's got about a 3 16 bow in it like this. So we are going to we're going to run this through the joiner. So we're going to run it and take our material off the middle and work our way out to the ends. And what's this look like? Eh? Eh? Yeah. Yeah, it's a push stick, isn't it? <laughs> All right. side I would potentially join. So we generally don't run the next side through the joiner. We run this through the planer, which the planer will follow. The pl it'll run through the planer uh, jointed edge down in the, in the bed of the planer, and that will follow. It, it will parallel these two sides. And you, I, I don't know if you can see this, but I mean, this thing, this thing is up every bit of 3 16 here in the middle. See how that waggles? And that's, that's hidden. So, we'll get the planer out and we'll, uh, we'll straighten this guy up for good and uh, see where it goes from there.
we're at less than a sixteenth, if this was a cabinet door and its sights were way better, if you don't have um, machinery, if you're just doing this by hand, when you go to pick out your wood for, and I would suggest um, picking out your own wood, um, someone else picking it for you, uh, they're not going to do it like you would. I mean, it's just straight up. It's not. In so anyway, when you get a board, if you don't have things to straighten your boards with, there's a couple of different alternatives that you have. Uh, first of all, you want to select premium hickory, white oak, whatever, whatever material you're using. When you pull your board, you want to look down one of the corners. And that will help you to determine a twist, basically two ends of the boards turning in opposite ways, that'd be a twist, or a crown. Crown this way. Crown's not so bad. If you have an, a crown that kind of plays into your advantage if you have curvature to your handle. But what you want to avoid is a bow and a twist. It just makes it a lot harder to shape the handle. If you get one and it bows on you, work it from a center line if it's not too bad. If it's over, if it's over a quarter, you're really going to have some problems, um, depending on the thickness of your handle and the, and the width of your board. You can run a center line across the whole edge, all four sides of the edge. And then instead of pulling your handle thickness off of your edges, because remember, your board's this way. So if you just scribe the edge of this board, this is going to follow that hook in the board. Lay out from that center line, and that'll give you. So then you have to, when you remove your material, you're paying attention to your center line and your marks in here. That'll help straighten it. But sometimes a board just has memory. It won't matter what you do. Like that one that has the twist and the larger grow rings, that was straight. That was straight business. And I re-straightened it before I shaped it. And it's, it's almost it's ready for finished shaping. Um, and it's still twisted. It still had that energy in it. The boards still have a memory, even though they're dried at 7%, which is what I like to use when I work with handle material. Anything more than that can be problematic. So anyway, these guys are ready. I'm liking how straight they are. And we'll see how well they behave in the coming days. Uh, the ones with the larger grow rings uh, that moved on me, this one and that one, um, it was literally three hours later and they started moving. So you just have to be aware of what the wood's doing. Wood is not static, it's very dynamic. Uh, and with the 40 inch handle, it, it, for some reason these 30s, they're just right where right they're, these, I, uh, these blanks I, I shaped roughly, you know, got them thickness and width uh, and they've, they've stayed, they've stayed great. So, uh, what are you going to do about it? I don't know. Uh, oh Lord, I can't believe how cold it is. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's Monday. Let's get to Friday. Let's, uh, pump each other up. I appreciate all of the texts you guys send me, all of the messaging. Uh, it's great. Pilk Pulk. You got your saw from Bucking. That was that's awesome. I, I'm stoked. I can't wait to see it in some wood. Uh, just everybody. Tasman is blowing up. Tree fella and his tree buggy for ground gal. Um, it's just it's just great to see everybody rocking it. Uh, Cosmic got his axe from Bucket. Kim and Angie 
I'm glad you guys are safe. That is, I still can't believe what, you know, I couldn't believe what I was reading when you were telling me about that um, truck accident. That's amazing. Glad you guys made it and are, are doing well. We all have things to do. We've got to get, keep the kindness rolling um, and just keep supporting each other and try to lift each other up and lift others up um, and, and just set, set the standard. Everybody stay warm, stay healthy, and I will talk to you soon.